welcome here to more Talking FCB and welcome back to the channel guys and I've got a really really interesting video coming up for you today because what we're going to do after Xavi's arrival all that excitement all of the hope the optimism that we have going forward there are still some questions that are out there that are going to be put out there by rival fans maybe Barca fans which is why today I've got this video here a bit more laid back different kind of style and we are going to cover the differences between Xavi and Ronald Koeman why we're already calling for time for patience with Xavi but we didn't so at the end of Ronald Koeman's time why was that I'm going to be explaining that we're also going to talk about why I believe that Juan Laporta is going to 100% back Xavi but he didn't do the same with Koeman. I'm going to explain why that didn't happen. And finally as well, a question that is coming up a little bit more frequently now. What's the difference between this time with Xavi and previously under Kike Setien? Who, as you'll remember, we were excited for. He also arrived on the promise of good football. Why didn't that materialise? And why is this time very, very different? It's all coming up. All discussed. So sit back and let's do it. Because like I say, guys, obviously here in these first few days of Xavi Hernandez taking over at Barcelona, we are all very, very excited. We're all so enthusiastic. I think for the first time in a long, long time, we feel as though we can genuinely have hope for this club moving forward and improving in the short, medium, and of course, the long term. But at the same time, I think the majority of us Barcelona fans, we understand the club's situation. We understand the financial situation, the sporting one. And we all do concede that although Xavi has plenty of potential, plenty of ability, coming in as the coach, he will still need time and possibly a lot of it. And he will need backing from fans and the board. And of course, that in itself now has led to questions, like I say, from people outside of the club, fans from outside the even some from the inside saying, OK, well, why are you asking for time already for Xavi? But you didn't necessarily give Ronald Koeman the same sort of luxury. And certainly Juan Laporta, as the president, never really seemed as though he wanted Koeman here. And he wasn't prepared to give him all that much time to turn it around. And I think particularly when it comes to Juan Laporta, if you're new this time around to his presidency, if you didn't really experience that first spell that he had as president at the club, you may have quite a different picture of what Laporta is like towards coaches. Because the number one thing, and I think the most important thing that often is, you know, quite forgotten when it comes to Koeman and Laporta, their relationship, is the fact that it's so important to remember Laporta did not appoint Ronald Koeman. Ronald Koeman was never Juan Laporta's choice as the coach of Barcelona. He only inherited him as the coach once he arrived as president. And quite clearly, he was never convinced by Koeman. And he's very much entitled to have that opinion, given the fact that he was not the one that chose him. And in fact, it was only the fact that Laporta also inherited the huge contract that Koeman had been given by Bartomeu that basically meant that Koeman stayed at the club a lot longer, I think, than Laporta would have liked, which of course led during their time together quite a strained relationship. I don't think they ever really saw eye to eye. There was a very unconvincing feel about it. And from start to finish, it was never, ever going to work. But, and this is the key here, that is not who Laporta is. That is not the kind of president that usually, for his own man, would be towards his coach. And I just want to explain here why now with Xavi, that back end's going to be different. Because, unlike with Koeman, this now is is Laporta's appointment. This is actually one of the most important, if not the most important appointments across both of his tenures as the president, because this is a massive, massive move from him, not just to appoint Xavi as his man as the new Barca coach, but to appoint him there until 2024. A two and a half year deal, which for a Barca coach, that's a long contract. You don't usually get those kind of deals as Barca coaches. And I think that speaks volumes already of the trust that Laporta is going to place in Xavi to turn things around, not only in the short term, but more importantly, in the long term. And already within the media, there are murmurings, there are rumours there that Laporta sees this as a very similar appointment to when he appointed Pep Guardiola back in 2008. We all know about those comparisons. We're all expecting them to come, of course. When let's not forget that back then, there was also questions about Pep, about the fact that he had a lack of experience at the top level, whether he was going to be able to take on the challenge and overhaul the squad and completely turn the club around. And of course... He was capable. He was ready. He was able to do that. The rest is footballing history. But still, 
people won't be satisfied. There will still be people that say, OK, if Laporta can be that supportive president, if he can get behind his coach and give them significant backing, well, why didn't he then try and do with Kuman what he's going to do with Chappie? Why didn't he back Kuman there in the long term to build something at Barca? But the truth is... There was nothing there. There was nothing to get behind. There was nothing to build from with Ronald Koeman. It's not like we didn't give him a chance. He was here for nearly one and a half seasons. We as fans wanted him to succeed. We wanted to get behind him. But there was nothing to get behind. There was no sign there of any progress, especially towards the end at Barca. Things were getting worse. They weren't getting better. They were getting worse. There was no sign of improvement or change at the club. And I think it's more than that too, especially here when it comes to Xavi, when it comes to Koeman, those comparisons. Because let's not forget, Koeman had already been a coach for 20 years. We all knew when Koeman arrived at Barca what we were getting. We knew of his limitations. We'd seen his work at Everton. We'd heard about his time at Valencia things like that. We all knew about what Koeman had and hadn't achieved during his time as a coach. And that's the thing. It wasn't as though if we let Koeman have a bit more time, if we let him develop as the Barca coach, was he suddenly going to turn into something completely different? Was he going to learn new skills as a coach? It wasn't going to be like that. You know, he's somebody there that's now towards the end of his coaching career. There's even talk that now he's been sacked from Barca. He may never coach again. And that was the thing. He wasn't going to suddenly change overnight. He wasn't going to become a different coach because he'd done it for so many years and he was towards the end of his time, whereas with Xavi, it's so different. It's the polar opposite here. This is somebody who only finished playing the game a few years ago. He's somebody there with a real fresh hunger. He's unbelievably motivated and with a huge understanding, not just of the game. We all know that Xavi and Koeman were legends, but Xavi has a real understanding of the modern game. Because as we know, football is always evolving. And it just feels like here with Xavi that what we're doing, we're banking on long-term future potential. Because there is the opportunity now, Xavi, to build something, to develop him as a coach. He is going to learn things as he goes on. There's no way at all that Xavi right now is the final product. He's got all the skills that he'll need. He'll need to learn things along the way. He'll need to pick things up and develop as he goes on. But that's the point. He's not at his peak yet. He hasn't reached his ceiling. With Ronald Koeman, you felt as though there was nothing else really to come. There was nothing else that he could do. But with Xavi, that future potential, that ability to learn now in the years to come, It's exciting to have somebody at the helm who can improve and will continue learning. But of course, that doesn't answer everything. That doesn't put together all of the doubts. That doesn't put to bed all of the questions because people will still say, okay, if Xavi has got that backing, he's got the long-term project, we do give him time. But is there any proof here that Xavi can succeed as a coach? We all know what he did and the success that he had as a player, but as a coach, does he have here the power, the personality to turn this team around? Given the amount of rebuilding needed, can he overcome those obstacles? And of course, with the newfound excitement among Barca fans, with the feeling that yes, we are going to see a different brand of football. Already comparisons are being made between Xavi and Kike Setien. Somebody who also arrived at the club in a difficult time. Somebody who also promised to come in and give us good football, who had played it in his previous clubs. And we all felt very excited about what Kike Setien could indeed bring to Barca. People are saying, well, what happened with Setien? Why will that not be the same with Xavi now coming in? But... There are big differences. Because you look at Kike Setien there in his time at Barcelona, I think his very, very first game, we saw some massive changes. We saw there a complete shift in the style, so much possession, so much passing, some of the fundamentals of our game that we'd lost actually brought back. But the problem was... Within a few games, if a result went badly, if things didn't quite go our way, there was big pressure on him. And then within a short amount of time, he abandoned his principles. Setien's team, by the end of his time at Barca, it was a barely recognisable Kike Setien team. It didn't play anything like his previous teams. And that, that is because he didn't command the dressing room. And quite possibly that came because he didn't have the backing from the previous board, the previous management there of Bartomeu. Because in order to actually come in, stamp your authority, you first of all need personality, you need to have a status. Setien lacked that. Xavi certainly won't. As the legend that he is, he will demand respect. Setien didn't really get that off the players. Let's be honest, there was times there when Setien was giving instructions, when he wanted to change things, especially looking at Edis Sarabia as well, when the players just didn't take them seriously. They didn't want to hear what they had to say. They didn't value their opinions. But believe me, that will not be the case with Xavi Hernandez, but especially there when you're looking at the boardroom too. When it came 
thing to set in if the players there were going above him, if they were going to Bartomeu, sort of moaning there about the coach, saying they didn't really like the way things were going on. You knew that the board would side with the players. They had given the players all of the power during their time as the president. But this time around... It's not going to be that way. This time around, if the players were to go above Xavi, if they were going to go to Laporta there, start complaining, start causing some problems, making some noise, Laporta, he's going to smack them back down. He's going to say, listen here, Xavi is your coach. Xavi is the leader. And that is the big difference between Valverde, Setien, Ronald Koeman. Xavi here has long-term potential. He has ability that he can improve. He's got a way of seeing the game. He understands. He can command the dressing room. But also as well, he 100% has the backing of the president now and just like he did in the days there of Pep Guardiola when he came in and he had a huge job on his hands he's given Xavi the keys that's what he's done right now he said you know what you're my man you're my appointment you are the person that I have chosen and now you have the power. You can shape this club in the way that you see fit. You can tear things up. You can dismantle things that were already here. And you can bring your own style. And that's why it feels right now like a genuine long-term project. Like something here that we can build season in, season out. Making progression. Making important steps. Making improvements. And we haven't seen that long-term vision. Well, since Laporta was last in power. Because the last board, you knew what they did. It was all about the short term. Whether it was coaching appointments, whether it was new signings, whether it was decisions that were taken off the field, everything was short term. You can see that. They never ever thought beyond their own time at the club. They never thought they're beyond their tenure. What they were leaving behind, acting in the club's best interest. You can see that. By the way, they left the club's finances. They left the club there on the verge of bankruptcy because they could never see beyond the next day they were that short-sighted. But now, it's about the long term. And and that's what's really exciting about this. That Xavi is going to bring in that huge backroom staff. He's arriving here with his own physio. We're already hearing changes being made within the medical team. And of course, when it comes to the transfer window, we're going to see Xavi have full control there over incomings, over outgoings, scouting, the youth teams. Xavi is going to be central to every single plan that this club has. And that's vital. In order to get back to the top, in order to really get back to where we belong, not only on the sporting level, but as a club, as Barca, to get our philosophy and our way of thinking about football back, we need everyone, from the coach, to the players, to the staff, to the board, pulling in the same direction. This hasn't happened. The past few years, these things have not aligned. They've not been heading in that same direction. But now, Chaffee not only has the ability to pull this off, but he has the backing of the current board, the license to enforce those changes, and I suggest you all, buckle up, strap yourselves in, because we are about to go on a journey. And indeed, guys, like I say, it was a bit of a different style video today, different kind of conversation. But I just want to address some of those questions, some of those doubts that are coming in. There are going to be, of course, many questions of Xavi. He's going to have to answer them all out there on the field, on the training ground, all of that kind of stuff. He's aware of the situation that he's coming into. He knows that obviously his name will only carry him so far. He is going to have to prove himself. He is going to have to show that we can fully get behind him. But let's give him patience, guys. Let's make sure here that we're giving him time to succeed, to bring his own style, to make all of those changes, because there's so much to change. And in a short space of time, you can't do everything. It's not going to change overnight. We need to be patient. We need to give him time. And because of all the reasons that we've listed here today, he deserves it. And Juan Laporta, I am convinced he will give it to him. So please... Let me know those thoughts down below. What do you make here of Xavi's arrival and early days so far at the club? And what do you make there of some of those comparisons between himself and Pep Guardiola? Also Xavi and Ronald Koeman, those differences, and also Kike Setien as well. How do you see the whole situation, and especially Barca, how do you see them looking in the long term? I will see you soon, of course, for plenty more videos, guys. And I thank you indeed today for watching and supporting... But until next time, as always, Vishka, El Basha.